There's still lots of time left in the Blue Jays offseason, but there are weaknesses in the team that need to be addressed. We'll break down Toronto's rumored interest in veteran starting pitcher Johnny Cueto, as well as a hypothetical trade proposal on this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. We've got a lot to get into today, but first I want to thank you all for the support. It's been unreal, and we're on the road to 5K subscribers by Christmas time. Time is pressing, but I think we're going to get there, Nick. I think so, too. The live streams have been going crazy. We've been going live every you know couple days, and you guys have been really enjoying it. So we're going to keep those up. But, yeah, hit the subscribe button if you're new, and let's get right into the first topic of the video because we have a lot to get into today. Johnny Cueto to the Blue Jays is the first topic. And I'm going to pop up a screenshot that got released or earlier this afternoon here, so from Ben Nicholson Smith, a reliable reporter. This was in his article basically recapping what has happened so far in the offseason. And he said, along those lines, sources said they have been interested in Johnny Cueto, who posted a 3.35 ERA in 158.1 innings with the White Sox last year. And another tweet from him, this was uh, you know a few days ago, a couple days ago, he said, Jays could add multiple starting pitchers. They must add one. Um, this was before the Chris Bassett signing, but he said they could add multiple starting pitchers. So it kind of goes on to, uh, you know, talk about Johnny Cueto more and uh, kind of points to the fact that the Jays are looking to not only add one in Chris Bassett, but hopefully another to, you know, firm up the bullpen. And you've spoken before about the fact that, you know, Kikuchi should not be starting as our fifth starter. So what are your thoughts on the, uh, the Johnny Cueto rumors? I still think that fifth starter spot should be reserved for a lefty, not Yusei Kikuchi but uh, definitely someone else on the open market. Johnny Cueto is not bad, but he's also, I think, uh, he's in his late 30s, so it's tough to rely on a guy like that. I know he had a solid year in 2022, but uh, I'd still like another lefty. I, I don't like going into the season with just five righty starters. That kind of scares me a little bit. So, you know, uh, maybe a Drew Smiley, you know, um, something like that. But I, I wouldn't mind Cueto. I, I think there's better out there, whether it be on the trade market or the free agent market. I don't think we should have to settle for for a 38 year old Johnny Cueto. Yeah, I'm kind of on the other side, but I mean, I understand a lefty is is very important, but I mean, Johnny Cueto is about as good as you can get from a fifth starter. Um, where it, with everyone that's left in the thing, we'll pop up his stats and look at last year. So 3.35 ERA in 25 games, and even the year before, a four ERA in 22 games. Now, obviously, I know what you're saying. He's aging, and he's he's aging quickly, but. I don't know. He seems like, to me, he seems like a perfect fifth starter if we had another lefty. The fact we don't have a lefty is a bit concerning, and that's kind of the big hit here. Um, obviously, a Drew Smiley would probably be a bit better of a fit. I would agree with you on that. But, but, you know, if we're not getting Drew Smiley, then I would rather them add Johnny Cueto, especially because now with the signing of Kevin Kiermaier official one year, nine years, um, or one year, nine million, we're over the tax now anyways. So I want to see another starter added. And I think Drew Smiley would be a better uh, a better fit just because he's a lefty. However, if we get Johnny Cueto, I would not complain. Yeah, you know who would have been the perfect fit there? Who? Andrew Heaney. That yeah. would have been the perfect hit, the perfect fit. But uh, unfortunately, he's off to Texas. We didn't get him. But hey, I mean, Johnny Cueto's not the worst pitcher in the world. I, I just don't, I don't like the prospects of him you know, of us like kind of relying on him to stay healthy over the full course of a season. I know he was good last year, but you just never know at that age what could happen to a guy. So um, I'm still kind of reserving that spot for a lefty or someone a little better. Um, so we can maybe move one of our other starters down a peg. But uh, I, I think there's better out there. And I think we have the assets to go out there and get a better player than Johnny Cueto. So we shouldn't settle. We're over the tax, like you said. So you might as well go for broke here. You might as well go way over the tax if you're going to yeah. go over. I agree. If we can get a better, obviously a way better player. However, you seem, you're lower on Johnny Cueto than I thought you would be. Obviously, phenomenal year last year, especially given his age. But I will quickly pop up his base off with Savant here. And, you know, it's 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 average. It's it's maybe slightly below average in a lot of ways. He averages 91 with the fastball. Not great peripherals here. 11th percentile in fastball velocity. So, you know, these kind of, this kind of supports your case. And it kind of goes back to the fact that, um, you know, there was an article posted today. We might have a video on it in the future. They basically talked to uh, from a reporter, basically said that Kevin Kiermaier is going to get a lot of innings in center field. And that the, the quote was, he denied a contract from the Dodgers not to be the fourth outfielder in the Blue Jays. So there's a good chance that he plays 110, 120 games. So that kind of goes to your point. Maybe we try to catch her for a, uh, a more elite starting pitcher than Johnny Cueto. And I agree with the yeah. sense of, it, I would rather add Johnny Cueto than not have him. But if that's the last option, but, you know, I would rather a Juice Smiley or trade for a lead arm. Yeah, I get that. I get that for sure. I, I saw another name that was circulating a lot amongst Jays fans. 
and that's Noah Syndergaard. And about Noah Syndergaard, I got breaking news. He just signed with the Los Angeles Dodgers. So wow. that is not uh, that is not going to be an option, unfortunately, for the Toronto Blue Jays. Former draft pick of the Blue Jays was Noah Syndergaard, but unfortunately we traded him in that R.A. Dickey debacle, that experiment that did not work out for us. But, hey, good for him. Um, the, the free agent market starting to get a little bit thin now. After Carlos Rodon, there isn't much left out there on the pitching market. So, like you said, if he is... He is the last resort. It's not the worst possible option to go to. I would feel safer with Johnny Cueto than you say Kikuchi, and I think most people would. Me too. And uh, so if that's what it comes down to, uh, you know, minor improvement is uh, is better than no improvement with Kikuchi, or at least to give Kikuchi some breathing room. But let's get into the second topic, and that was good by you, a little Woj bomb halfway uh, halfway into the video here. <laughs> Big move coming. Now, this kind of relates. There's a couple of reports that we uh, I want to show you here. This is from the first one. I'll pop up the screenshot right now. This is from MLB Scoops. Now, this is the guy who broke the Chris Bassett news early, along with some other uh, news as well. And so this guy has a bit of, you know, credentials, and he's been right in the past. And he says the Blue Jays are now shifting their focus on the trade market as they seek to trade one of their catchers in a headliner for more help like Pablo Lopez or Brian Reynolds. And obviously, we've been talking about that a good bit throughout the, uh, you know, throughout the offseason so far. And uh, we had a hypothetical trade, but before we get into that, this was Joe Siddle yesterday saying, morning coffee tastes good today. I don't see the Blue Jays trading a catcher without acquiring one to go with two of the current three. I mean, no depth unless they get one in a trade. Varsho. He mentions Varsho again. So the trade rumors are picking up, and this was a hypothetical trade by a, um, you know, a bit of a Jays fan on Twitter. I don't know if he has sources. I don't think he does, but he, uh, he basically said, I want to get your guys' opinions in the comments as well on this. It's um, Toronto gets Jake McCarthy and Luzardo. Arizona gets Edward Cabrera and Jake Eater. And Miami gets Gabby Moreno and Cade, um, Cade Dowdy. So what are your thoughts on that trade? And um, this guy has, you know, reported some stuff in the past. But this is more of just a hypothetical to get your guys' thoughts on a potential Gabby Moreno trade. Because, I don't know, his name has popped up a bit more recently, especially in reports. That's uh, it's a lot to give up. It's a lot to give up, but you're getting quite a bit back as well. Jake McCarthy, he'd be our everyday center fielder. There's no doubt about it. Jesus Luzardo. Who knows how he develops? Maybe, maybe he develops into a two or a three starter. That would be great. He's also a lefty, so it fits another need that the Jays have. But I don't know. I don't know if I want to get rid of uh, Gabby Moreno. I, I've been kind of on the train that he's sort of untouchable. And I, I don't want to see him go somewhere else. If he goes to the NL West, then I wouldn't be particularly that mad about it. But I don't want to see him go somewhere else and just become an absolute stud because I do think he has that type of potential. Whereas Jake McCarthy and Jesus Lazardo, do they really have superstar potential like Gabby Moreno? I don't know. It's hard to say right now because all all those players are young. Uh, Edward Cabrera, he's a young guy. He's, he's one of the top prospects in the Marlins system. Uh, Kate Dowdy was one of our top draft picks not too long ago, so... It's uh, it's hard to say. It's really it's really tough to see who would be the winner of that trade before it's even before it's even made. But I don't know. It's something to think about. I guess if you're the Jays. Yeah, and you know these trade proposals now are getting crazier and crazier, especially with the the three way trade with Sean Murphy that happened. And giving up Gabby would be a very tough pill to swallow, just because you know you kind of know what you're giving away with Danny Jansen and a bit to less of extent of Kirk. But giving you know Moreno away means you're really just going all in over the next few years and Gabby could and probably will turn into an absolute stud of a catcher or maybe he goes into a different position but the kid can flat out hit and I'll pop up the trade one more time and I love McCarthy and Lozardo would be you know this is kind of a win now um move but you also get some yeah. you get some young assets in uh, McCarthy as well like you said so I don't know it's a very interesting trade and let us know the thoughts uh, your thoughts in the comment section below because you know, Gabby I know you guys are a bit more protective of him uh, we've, we've ran some polls in our live stream in the community tab and you guys we all kind of want to trade Danny Jansen if we're going to trade one, I think. I think it just makes the most sense. But, um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, well, the thing the thing with Gabby Moreno is that you don't want to trade him unless you're getting, like, a surefire superstar in return, a guy like Brian Reynolds. And as as good as Jake McCarthy and Jesus Luzardo are, do they have superstar potential? Maybe. I, I don't think so. I mean, they could surprise, and, and Jake McCarthy could have, like, a – an astronomical leap next year it's hard to say but i wouldn't include gabby in any trade unless it makes your team a contender right away i uh yeah i completely agree and i think we're on the same page there you need to get someone back who is going to impact the team like surely and has hopefully years of control as well 
kind of like maybe even like a you know gabby for pablo lopez would make maybe a bit more sense someone like that where you know obviously he's still a bit older but someone who you know mm. is going to have an impact but we'll uh, we'll digress for now and move into the final topic which is just a quick free agency update because i mean you gave the first one noah Syndergaard signs uh, you know live in the video just a few minutes ago but we had a couple other signings, and Peter, I'll get your thoughts on two of these very quickly. So we have Ross Stripling, his, uh, his contract releases, or, or the, the numbers released today. Two years, $25 million with the signing bonus. We also have the monstrous Carlos Correa, 13-year, $350 million deal, along with Kevin Kiermaier, one, mil- or one year, $9 million. So do you want to hammer out those three, and just what, what are your thoughts on those really quickly? Well, for Ross Stripling, I, I think, unfortunately, he was just the odd man out Agreed. when we got Chris Bassett. I mean, Chris Bassett is the perfect replacement. I think he's a more reliable replacement than Ross Stripling at this point of their careers. You know, I I wish Ross all the best. I think he's going to have a lot of success in San Francisco in that hitter's ballpark, in that uh, pitcher's ballpark, sorry. Uh, And Carlos Correa, that's the big one. That was the big fish left on the market here. I think he's the best shortstop in the game. And I think he's better than Fernando Tatis. I think he's better than Dansby Swanson. I think he's better than Xander Bogarts. Uh, I think he's also better than Fernando Tatis. I don't know if I said that already, but Trey Turner. Uh, I think he's better than than all of them. I think he's the top dog. Uh, Troy Tulowitzki was probably my favorite Blue Jay when he was here. He was one of my favorite players in general when he was in Colorado. And uh, I, he just reminds me so much of Troy Tulowitzki. Cannon of an arm, tall shortstop, very athletic. And um, I think the Giants right now are probably my second favorite team. I can't wait to see what they do over there in the Bay. And Kevin Kiermaier, it's a bargain. One year, $9 million on this market. Can't get much better than that for a guy that plays platinum glove level defense. And he'll continue to do that as long as he's still playing in the major leagues. So I think it's a great signing. You said it before. We don't know how much he's going to play, but signs are pointing towards him being a uh, more of an everyday player than we think. Yeah, I think he's going to be our starting center fielder unless we make uh, bearing a big trade. I could, I don't know. All signs are pointing to him starting on opening day. And to be honest, with the amount of hitting we have, I don't know how much I, uh, I don't know. I don't really, I don't mind it, you know, having an excellent defender in center field. You know, I don't hate it either. That's a better word. I don't hate it. But yeah, that'll wrap up the video. <laughs> I, I agree with you. The career contract, unbelievable for him. Good he got paid. And uh, Stripling, nothing but love for him. Phenomenal while he was here. Very, you know, very professional. And uh, Chris Bassett was just the better option for the team, and it just made more sense. But that'll wrap up the video. Thank you guys so much for support. It's been unbelievable. We're going to keep doing the live streams when we can. And uh, we do have channel members now, so if you want to support even more, no pressure at all. But you make sure to check that out. You get custom emotes. But thank you guys for watching. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks.